question. Hmm? Whatever question I ask, make sure to remember to repeat it since we don't have a mic. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidi al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Allahumma in ya'udhu bika min al-hammi wa al-hazan wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wa al-kasal wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wa al-bukhul wa a'udhu bika min ghalabit al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal. Allahumma in yasalaka al-afu wa al-afiyah wa al-mu'afat al-da'ima fi dini wa dunia wa ahli wa mali. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala sayyidina maulana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimi. Alhamdulillah, we did a brief introduction to the life and works of Mawlana. Um, if I say we picked a drop from the ocean of Mawlana, it would be an exaggeration. Um, people spend a lifetime uh, in your book that the Dean Intensive gave you guys. Nicholson says on his deathbed, and he spent 30 years on the researching the Mathanawi, he actually corrected the Farsi edition. And if you buy any Farsi edition now uh, from Iran that's published in Iran, there also is Nicholson edition. Uh, but he said on his deathbed that, uh, Rumi, uh, I think I understand you now. And right before he dies, like he has a better understanding of Rumi. And uh, I don't think that we can, one of my teachers said, before I left, he said, uh, if you try to, he said, people want to know Rumi, they want to understand him. He said, they're wasting their life. He said, we would never be able to know him. We can only study his poetry. That's all we can do. We can study his poetry. And that's what we're trying to do, to study uh, his poetry. <coughs> Yesterday, the time was a little bit short because of the event, so uh, what I wanted to go over is one of the, the major thing about Mawlana is, is his path, is his way, his understanding of the world. And the Masnavi, uh, for me personally, I think it's two things. That's, if you summarize the whole Masnavi, it's two things, two subjects. Nafs and love. Because the nafs doesn't allow love to enter the body. Because nafs fills you up with yourself. And if you're full of yourself, you can't have love for anyone but yourself. So the whole Masnavi is teaching us how to get rid of your nafs so you're empty and then enter love into your body. That's the essential message of Masnavi. But he, when, when Mawlana talks about love, he talks about love. Like you can feel it. Chun qalam andar navishtan mishitaft, chun be'ish qamad qalam bar khud shikaft when the pen was going to write in a haste, because pen were created to write. That's it, that was, that's the job of a pen. So when, when the pen goes to write, it goes in a haste, because it wants to fulfill what, he, what it was created for. So he said, when the pen is going to write in a haste, when it comes to the word love, it is split and broke into pieces. Right? He continues now, if, if listen to this, like he's, can, he's trying to tell you all of his knowledge, all of his understanding, which is love. Now he's trying to express to us how he feels about love, right? Right? If I give you a commentary on love, on love, if I give you a continuous commentary on love, the day of judgment will come, the day of judgment will end, another day of judgment will come, another one will end, a hundred day of judgment will come and end, and I won't be finished. Zan ke tarikh qiyamat ra had ast, had kuja anja ke ishq bi had ast. Because God has put a had, a limit for the day of judgment, right? That, 100,000 years, 50,000 years, we read in the Quran. Where is the limit that God has set for love? It's limitless. It's limitless. So he says, I can go on and teach. But then he says, 
No matter how much I talk about love, no matter how, much, how many classes I give, no matter how much commentary I write about love, when I arrive to love, I feel so humiliated in front of it because I haven't done justice to it. So it's a subject of love. The subject is a subject, and they were lovers. This is, you want happiness, is, you know, Sheikh Hamza mentioned one time a statement of Buddha. They, somebody asked Buddha, he said, I want happiness. And Buddha told the person, he said, get rid of the I and get rid of the want, you're left with happiness, right? Because we, it's, it's the I, it's the nafs and the desire that doesn't, you know, blocks us from being happy. But they were happy because two things. They lived in the present. We are all living in the past or in the future, right? Khayyam says, Omar Khayyam, he says, Hargez gham aduruz marayad nagasht. Ruzi ke nayamad as, wa ruzi ke guzasht. I never was worried about two days. Never. I didn't even think about it. No worries about two days. The day that hasn't arrived and the day that passed. They lived in the present. And if you live in the present, you're happy. The second thing is they did everything with love. They enjoyed it. If you do things with love, you enjoy it. Iqbal Rahmatullah alayhi says, he says a beautiful poem in Urdu. He says, Sajda ye ishq ho to ibadat me maza aata hai. Khali sajdo me to dunya hai basa karti hai. If sajda is made with love, then you can taste the sweetness of your worship. It feels good to worship. The world is filled with empty, meaningless sajdas. You know, it's the exercise, right? It's the exercise. Rudaki says that, you know, God is not going to ask you about the movement. He's going to ask you about the waswasa of love that you have in your prayer. The waswasa of love in the prayer. But that's, that's their way. The way of Mawlana is the way of love, the way of ishq. We can't praise Mawlana. I don't think that we can praise him. Uh, one of the, the Jami, the great saint of Islam, he's called the seal of the saint, um, the last of the perfected saint. He says about Mawlana, uh, What can I say about this master, this amazing human being, Mawlana Rumi? All I can say is that he's not a prophet, but he does have a book. Another book, not a book of revelation, but a book of inspiration. A book of inspiration. The Mathnavi, he left many books, five major works for us, but the Mathnavi is, is very unique uh, as a literary masterpiece. And the, the Persian, they have a proverb, they said, the true perfume, musk, is the one that sells itself, not the one that the salesmen are trying to sell you. In other words, it smells so good that you want to buy it. You don't need any, uh, nobody tells you, oh, this is really amazing. Um, and the proof of Mawlana is Mawlana. The proof of the Masnavi is a Masnavi. He says in the, in the Masnavi, he says, of the top or ya dalili of the top. The sun is the proof for the sun. Ibn Atallah Sakandari said, when do you need a proof for the existence of the sun if you are on a midday, on a mid clear day at noontime? What proof do you need for the existence of the sun? It's there. So it's there. The Masnavi is there and that's its own proof. So we'll inshallah start uh, for the um, respect of the time. Time is sacred. Allah swears by the time. And, and uh, we have to respect it, inshallah. I want to finish on, on time. He starts his book <coughs> with 18 lines. As we mentioned, the number 18 is sacred because it represents Hay, uh, the living, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, he says, Bishna wa aznei chun hikayat mi konad. Az jidai ha shikayat mi konad. He, you know, sometimes it's called the lament of the reed. No, lay, nay. It's also called nay, noma, which is the one I chose. 
for the book that you are using for the Rahla, which means the message of the name, the letter of the name. One of the things that some of the people criticize, Mawlana, he says, well, he didn't start it with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. He starts straight with Bishna was made. Right? Listen to the read. We were in Shaykh Hamza's class two nights ago, and he mentioned a beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that anything that doesn't start with Bismillah is cut off from the Barakah. Now, if you look at Mawlana Rumi, my brother's doing a research on the books that Mawlana Rumi had access to at his time, like which books he had access to and he read. Because if you know what they read, you can go into their mind and see how they were inspired. <clears throat> One of the books that he had access to was a tafsir of Khaj Abdullah Ansari, the great saint uh, of the 5th century. He's buried in Harat, Afghanistan. And he wrote a 10 volume tafsir, Kashf al Asrar, which is a spiritual tafsir. What he did in his tafsir, he, he has put every surah has a diff, the, it starts with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, has a different meaning. The Bismillah Rahman Rahim has a different meaning. So they're all not all the same. So he has every surah that he's like, Al Fatiha has Bismillah Rahman Rahim tafsir is different than Baqarah because it, it's connected to the surah. And he had access to that. As a matter of fact, he says in, uh, in uh, one of the, 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 in one of the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, he said, before Bismillah Rahman Rahim came down to the Loh Mahfuz, he says that the winds were going in opposite direction against each other. He said the, 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 the oceans were going up and down. There was no control. He said that the, the, the earth was moving and shaking. The fire wasn't being controlled. It was burning everything. It was chaos. He said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, because those are the four anasur, right? Anasur al-Arba'a, Imam Ghazali mentions it, and Sheikh Ahmad Sarhindi goes in detail on, on those, like what are those, the, you have the wet, dry, hot, and cold, right? The earth, fire, water, right? Earth, water, fire, and wind. He said that when Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim came down, it brought a tranquility to the four elements. Bism, to one, Allah, Rahman, Rahim. And then the, the river started to flow, the fire started to keep you warm and not burn you, like from the first, in, you know, when you went near it. Now you can use fire to cook, to, to get warm. And the winds were, you had breeze, beautiful wind. So everything in the earth was still. And the power of Bismillah Rahman Rahim is that if you have those problems within you because we are made from the earth if you have the fire within you that you want to calm it down and you have the tsunamis in you people have that just do the dhikr of bismillah rahman rahim and inshallah it will tranquil all of us so he uh, he has that and if you look at the bismillah rahman rahim abdullah al-ansari imam ja'far al-sadiq you all the tafasir the major uh, commentaries of the quran they say that the whole quran is in al-fatiha and I'm sure all of you guys are students of knowledge and you heard this. And the Surah Al-Fatiha is in Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And the Bismillah Rahman Rahim called the Basmala is in Bism. And the Bism is in the letter Ba. Right? The letter Ba. Sheikh Muhammad Yaqubi said that the letter Ba is in the dot. And this is also said in many of the old tafsir, including Abdullah Ansari that all of them goes into the letter Ba. But Shaykh Muhammad Yaqubi Hafizullah says something so amazing. He said, even today, all of the modern world is dependent on a dot. He said, you take the dot out of the dot com and everything will collapse. And Allah is showing you that I can do that. I can put all of this into a dot. Now, if you look at the Quran, 114 surahs, 113 start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. One doesn't start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Surah Tawbah. What does it start with? Bara'atun min Allahi wa rasuli With the letter Ba. Because it's there. The Ba is there, the Ba has the Bismillah in it. What does Rumi start this book? Bishna. With the letter Ba. The Bismillah is there. Bishna. 
Now, Bishnah is an interesting word because he started with the fail al amr. It's a commanding imperative. He's telling you to listen. You know, I haven't seen any book that starts with a commanding imperative. It's really hard to find. If you look at, if you look at the Quran, uh, Mawlana Rumi basically, he's, some say that it's like the Quran in Persian. What they mean is that it's a commentary on the love of Allah and His Messenger. The whole book. Uh, Gul Pinar Ali, the, the, the commentator on, on Mathanari, he said, the reason why he doesn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, because the whole book is a commentary on Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The whole book, the whole Masnavi. He, so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, so he started with Bishna. And if you look at the Quran, the first revelation is a commanding imperative. It's what? Iqra, read. He's saying to listen to what he's reading. Listen to what he is reading, which is the Qur'an. And I'm going to give you what he is reading in a language that you can understand. That's all I'm going to do. That's why he's telling you to listen. That's why he's using fi'l al-amr, because he knows. He knows. It's not, he's not unsure about it. He's confident about it. Why is he confident about it? He says, Bishna wa iznay chun hikayat mi kanat. Listen to the read, how it narrates a tale, how it's telling you a story. It's amazing why he picked the read as an example. The reason why he picked the read is because the, the read is, one of the nature of the read is that if you look at the inside of it, uh, if you played the nay, if you look at inside the nay, they, it's empty in, inside, it's, it's hollow. He's telling you that the read is Rumi. He is the read. He's not telling you, listen to me. Why he's not telling you that? Because he can explain it much better if he tells you, listen to the read. He said, listen to the read. Listen to this name. Because it's telling you something. It's telling you a story. And the reason why he chose the name, because the name is empty from inside. It's empty from all the diseases. From kibber, from envy, from arrogance. From all these diseases of the heart, you know, Sheikh Hamza has a beautiful book, Purification of the Heart, that goes over 30 diseases of the heart and how to purify yourself. What he is saying is, listen to me, listen to me, I'm like the name. I've been purified from all these diseases. I've been purified. If you listen, that's why it sounds good. That's why the name is so soothing, because it's pure. And that the holes in the name represents the ups and downs of life that I've been through the trials and tribulation of this dunya, and those are the holes that were put into me. And this is why I sound really good. So listen to me. He's asking you over and over and throughout the whole uh, mathnavi. He just keep repeating, especially in the, in the beginning, to listen. Listen to me. Why? Because I'm going to tell you a story. What story is he telling us? He's going to tell his story, which is your story. I'm going to tell you a human story. It's a human story. It's our story. We share the same story, all of us. But if you just listen, I'll tell you your story because you have forgotten. The dust of the dunya has covered our eyes. We have forgotten about where we came from and where we're going. But Rumi is saying, I remember because I've been hollowed. And I have all these holes in my body from the ups and downs of, I remember clearly where I came from, and I know clearly where I'm going. So if you just listen, because we share the same human story, we will get there together. But this you have to just trust me on this, and listen to me. As judai ha, shikayat mi kanat. It complains from separations. It complains from separations with the S at the end. What is he complaining from? What separation is Rumi complaining from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the souls first, right? All of the human soul. It's called the Yawm al-Alast. The day that Allah asked all the souls, am I not your Lord? And everybody, all of the soul answered in affirmation. And they said, Bala, indeed you are our Lord. And this is one of the most amazing things that I can't understand, the concept of atheist. 
they already agreed that he's our Lord on the Yawm al-Alas, and now they say they don't, he doesn't exist. It just. But anyways, complaining from that separation, that from there, from divine presence, when we were created as ruh, a soul, we were sent from there into this dunya, to the womb of our mothers. That is the main separation that he's talking about. Leaving the divine presence and coming into this dunya in the womb of your mother. Each and every one of us. Every human being, every soul comes in. The soul is the meaning and the flesh, the fetus, is the form. And that's when the form and meaning comes together, right? What we were studying in the logic class. So the meaning comes, the, 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 the soul comes in from the heaven and enters the form which is from the earth. That's the complaint. That's the main complaint he's having. Because now he's been separated from his beloved, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all, and that's the major, the essential complaint is that. He has other complaints. The complaints of coming out from the womb of your mother. The, 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 a place that you are fed 24 hours a day, you're taken care of, no takalluf, all is done for you, courtesy of your Lord. Come into this world where you have to, now you have to chew the food, you have to do things, you have to work, you have to, all these things that we do in our daily life, he's complaining about, I came to this world. And then he has all the other complaints of separating from his homeland, from Balkh. You're all from US, Canada, Istanbul, uh, Australia, every, all over the world. You miss your families, you, you miss your homeland. It's, you have a connection, right? Hubbul Watan, the Prophet said, it's min al-Iman. The love of your homeland is from your Iman. There's nothing wrong with loving where you were born and raised. So that's the complaint, another complaint of being separated from your homeland, your friends, your community. Another separation is every time we turn away from Allah. Every turn from Allah is a separation. We put a barrier between us and Allah. Every sin is a separation. Every time we go into ghifla is a separation. Heedlessness is separation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his name is at tawwab at tawwab means the one who's constantly turning towards you. Like we turn, tawbah is a turning. You turn towards Allah when you make tawbah, you literally you turn toward Allah. Like you say, tawbah, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to turn toward my Lord. I make tawbah. When you turn towards Allah, Allah has already turned towards you. Because He's at tawwab He's the one who's constantly turning towards you. So that's another step. We put these barriers between us and our Creator. Those are the complaints that he has from uh, separation. Kaznayastan tamara bibrida and dar nafiram mardozan nolida and. Ever since they cut me from the reed bed, men and women, they wept, they bemoaned because of me. In other words, this cutting from the Yawm al-Alas, right? From the original place in divine presence. Ever since I was cut from there and sent to the world, everyone wept. Uh, this line uh, is an interesting line. Um, I tell you this, and, and as I said yesterday, honestly, this is not a fiqh class or aqidah class um, where you have to take everything as an aqidah. Um, and, 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 and I wanted to clarify that everything that I say, I, I'm taking full responsibility for it. This is not, if there's a problem in, of understanding of it, you can talk to me afterwards, inshallah, hopefully we can clarify. And if people don't disagree uh, and things of that nature, it has nothing to do with Dean Intensive or the Rahla. I don't want you guys to think that uh, my mistake, don't put it on them. It's my mistake and, and I'll take it for it. But um, I was with my teacher who is, um, I was talking to Dr. Asad about this uh, back in, in the Bay Area. 
I, he came to my store. He's a doctor, a physician as well, and he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's an island, he's a real island. He finished 12 years of uh, Fakhrul Madaris, and mashallah, may Allah bless him. He, he came to the store, and I said, this is about three months ago. I said, I'm going to Turkey. I had my Rumi book I was reading. He said, what are you reading? I said, I'm reading the Mathnavi. He said, amazing book to read. Uh, I said, well, it come from you. It gives me more encouragement now to read it. He said, I said, I'm going to Turkey, inshallah, and I'm attempting to do like a translation of, the, of, of some of the poems. He said, which one? I said, uh, and he said, he said, which one? Are you doing the one that he says, Kaznayastan tamara bibridan, aznafira mardozan nolidan? He recited the second line. Usually, everybody who wants to recite this poem, they recite the first line. I said, yes, I'm doing that. And he said, uh, do you know what that means? I said, I have no idea what that means. I mean, th- when your teachers ask you, do you know what that means? Just say no, even if you know it. Because, you know, you, you, just, you just lose if you say yes. This is why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Sahaba, he said, do you know what this means? What do they say? Allah wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Only Allah and His Messenger. Some of the questions that, they, uh, that the Prophet asked you, like, man, I know this. How could they didn't know that? It was just their adab. And then they knew that whatever he says, it's something that they don't know. So I said, no, I don't. And he said, he said, Allahu A'lam. The first thing he said, Wallah, he said, Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best. But I think that he's talking, he said, do you have a pen? I said, yeah. So he gave me a pen and he drew it. As a matter of fact, I took a picture of it. I texted it to my good friend, uh, Dr. Asad, who's a, who's a doctor. I said, listen, can you look at this? And he said, subhanAllah, it, it, from the scientific, from the you know, medicine science, it's all accurate. So he said, you know, when, when we are formulated in, in the body, the human being, he said, we, it's not in the womb of your mom. He said, it's, there's a place on the side, and he drew the womb, and then he drew it on the two sides. He goes, this is called salpinx. I said, what? I don't understand, you know, the medical language. So he said, yeah, it's called salpinx, and basically this is where the X and Y chromosomes gets together, and that's when you know whether it's a male or female. And then they move afterwards into the womb. He said, this is like a trumpet. That's what they, at the end of it is like a little hand. And he said, it's actually called nafir in Arabic. And what Mawlana is saying, he says, from my nafir, if you translate it from my trumpet, like that's what the literal translation means. Everybody is crying. He said, I think he's saying that because men and women start crying, that that's where you know that you're a man or women from this point. This is the first point of knowing a man. The, the weeping starts from there. The first weeping that you do is not when you're born, it's right there. So he's saying they're weeping from that moment when they come together, you're a female or a male, you understand that, okay, I just left the, the divine presence and I'm here in this world. That's where the weeping starts. And, and then he finished, he goes, Allahu Alam, and he left the store. So I actually wasn't planning to mention this because I'll probably get in trouble for this. Uh, that how did he know about this stuff? My, you know, my, you know, all these modern technology were invented at that time. But anyways, it's interesting that the nafir is the same word in, in Arabic medicine now for what he's talking about. Allahu Alam. But anyways, that the crying starts from then. The weeping starts. And this weeping is just for, from the separation. Because now, at this point, it's fitra. It knows what it was cut off from. When we come into the world, the dust of the dunya covers us. We no longer can see. We no longer can see the, the truth. Most people, they can't see. That's why it's hard to find the target. In our time, you know, tr- traditionally it was so easy to find Islam. Like you went, now you go, it's like, brother, this is Islam. This, you have the Fox News Islam. and you have the, It's like all these Islam. Uh, somebody, you know, somebody said to me that, you know, I, w- I wanted to study the Masnavi, but the, the Imam of the Masjid said, this, the Masnavi is filled with uh, bid'ah and kufr and shirk. So don't open it. So like you don't know, like people are confused. Uh, Shaykh Hamza Hafidhu Allah mentioned in his logic class at Zaytuna that one of the nature of shaitan is that he sets up false targets. So when you have the bow and arrow, you hit it, you hit the bullseye, you go close, it's not there anymore. It's a false target that he set up. Finding the right target is, that's the key. It's like, uh, 
my analogy would be like the, the Bruce Lee movie, when they, the last scene when he has a fight and it's all, the room is full with mirrors. And he, does, he sees himself and he sees the enemy, but he sees, you know, multiplicity. Multiple, he sees all of these pictures of himself in there. And he starts hitting but the enemy, but it hits the glass. And he starts hitting the enemy, but it hits the glass. He doesn't know which one is real, the real form, and which one is, uh, which ones are the, the phony ones. That scene is figuring out the unity, the one from the many. So what, he, what does he do, Bruce Lee? He leaves the fighting. He, just go, he actually leaves the fighting, calms down. And then he, real, he sees the one from the many. Even though they all look the same, but he sees the one from the many, and he hits the enemy. Which in our, in, in, in our tradition, that would be the shaitan. Finding all of these tricks that he's playing on us. He continues, سِينَ خَوْحَمْ شَرْحَ شَرْحَ أَسْفِرَاقَ تَا بِقُوْيَمْ شَرْحِ دَرْدِ إِشْتِيَاقَ We are in the third line. I want a heart that has been ripped many times over so that I can tell the pain of love desire. In other words, if, I, if your heart hasn't been ripped apart by love, I can't tell you, you won't understand it. It's like teaching you calculus and you haven't even had pre-calculus or geometry. If you don't have the prerequisite which is being ripped apart by love, then I can't tell you. So he's, I'm in search of finding that heart, right? This is the meeting of Shams, right? So when Mawlana meets him, he goes, oh my God, there is that person that I've been looking all my life. What, what is the purpose of the heart? Uh, Attar has a poem about the seven limbs and the dhikr of each limb. He said, ishtiyaq shawq ar-Rahman dhikr qalb. The ishtiyaq the desire, the love desire for Ar-Rahman, for Allah, that is the dhikr of your heart. To build that desire that is burning with the desire of Allah. That is the dhikr of your heart. So he's saying that if you want to understand me, that I give you this story that I'm telling you, your story, my story, the human story, you have to have a heart that's been ripped apart by love. In other words, you have to walk on the path of love. Then you can understand me. The awliya, the Gnostics, you know their hearts are ripped apart and they're burning in the love of Allah. In us, we are burning with the fire of our own nafs. That's the only difference. Everybody's burning. Everybody's burning. Either is the flame of nafs, or the frame of love of Allah and His Messenger. So we have to make that decision. Har kasi ku dur man az asl khish, baz juyad ruzgar wasl khish. Allah, whoever is separated from its origin, it will come back one day that it want to connect back to its asl, to its origin. If you're separated, and this has two meanings, kulli and juz'i. It has essential meaning and particular meaning. The essential meaning is obviously what we talked about is that we were separated from the divine, right? So at any, we are, at any point that awareness is going to come, then we want to go back. We want to go back to Allah. Everybody will get that. But the juz'i is, you know, a runaway child leaves home, goes away, and a week later, he starts missing his mother. He starts missing his friends. He starts missing his... He wants to go back. Everybody wants to go to their asal. Everybody wants to connect back to their origin. Everybody. But we, we are here, and we, our purpose is what? To go back to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are Allah's, we belong to Allah, and we return back to Him. And what the ulama and awliya and Gnostics are doing, they spend their whole life to go back to Allah with adab. That's it. All of these sciences that we learn, everything that you are learning, at the end you want to acquire adab. And if you don't have adab, you can have all the knowledges of the world. 
is useless without Adam. Adam. Uh, Khaj Abdullah Ansari said, he, he said, Adam nihayat qal wa bidayat hal ast. He said, Adam is the end of people of qal and the beginning of people of hal. In other words, people spend a whole lifetime of learning to get a, finally, what did you learn? Adab. All of these signs are teaching us Adab. Uh, Abdul Qadir Bidil, Rahimullah, the great poet of Delhi, he said, Baghairi Khak Shuran, Harchi has be Adabist. Except death, in reality, everything else you do in your life is a loss of Adab. The only time you have perfect Adab is when you die. Because you're completely, that's why they say you should be like the dead at the hands of the washer. That's the only time you're going to have perfect adab. That's it. And we'll try. We'll try through our life to get to that level where, you know, adab. Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, when Allah said, oh, go out of the heavens, you have sinned. He didn't argue where he said, you know, like, he could have argued, right? It's all in your hands. Predestination, it was in your knowledge. You did, you did this like shaitan, but he didn't. Because he was in love with Allah, he said, sure, I made a mistake. And that's what lovers are. If, uh, if the beloved tells the lover that, uh, you know, yesterday you made this mistake, you're not going to say, oh, no, no, you made the mistake, I didn't do it. Oh, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake. Right? Because you love the person. And that's, a, that's, the, that's the essential love. من به هر جمعیت نالان شدم جفت بدحالان و خوشحالان شدم Now he's telling you about his travels in his life He said, I've been going to every group I sat with everybody With the people of happiness And the people of shiqawa So you have two types of people, right? Sa'ada and shiqawa, that's it There's no in the middle Either there are people of happiness They will enter paradise Or shiqawa that they will go to hell, right? Basically what he's saying, that I went to everyone and I cried out my story. I sat with the good and the bad and the ugly. Everybody. And I told him, listen, listen to my story because I'm telling you your story. Because of the love he had. It was all out of love. He didn't have to do it. Why do you have to go to everybody? Why do you have to sit with these guys and that guys and travel and tell them about this? It's because of the love that he was burning that he would see people in the state of ghifla and he would just wanted to remind him that where you came from and where are you going. Harkasi az zan khud shud yaar man az darun man najas asrar man A friend of mine actually told me that somebody is doing their working on their PhD on this line which I don't know what he's doing but this is an amazing line. My notes are about uh, Six lines, so he's doing a PhD. He must be very smart. Um, he said, everyone became my friend because of their opinion of me. But wallahi, if you understand this line, if you internalize it, you will not be disappointed with anybody in this world. A human being can't disappoint you. All we, disappointment is because we don't understand this line. Everybody became my friend because of their opinion of me. As darun iman, not just asrar iman. They didn't seek the secrets that were inside of me. And then, but nobody cared about who I was. All they cared about who they thought I was. That's what they cared about. They formed something of me in them. A suwar, right? A taswir, a picture, a form of me. But not the meaning. Nobody cared about the meaning. They, all they cared was about the form. They didn't seek the meaning that was inside of me. And that's the world. That's dunya. That's all the breaks up. Everybody who break up, that's it. Because they don't know the meaning, they only know the form. And the form was created in their mind based on their understanding of you. Not your understanding of yourself. It's, 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 it's interesting what he says.
So he says on the next line, this is a continuation of the last line. Sir man, as man dur least. My sir, my secret, my meaning, what's inside of me, it is no difference from what I'm crying out to you. It's the same. Lake Chashmo Gushra on Nur Nist. But the problem is that your eyes and your ears doesn't have the light to see or hear it. That is the problem. In other words, the secret that's inside of me is the same, same thing that I'm telling you. I'm transparent. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a monophic. I'm telling you exactly what's in my heart. But the problem is that you can't see. Your eyes can't see. Your ears cannot hear. Because you don't have the light. Only way you can see is with the light, right? This famous story of Mawlana Rumi, when he, there's, a, uh, there's an elephant in a room, in a dark room, and all these people go and say, go see what is in there. And one person grabs it, oh, this is a bed, because it touches the, the, the side of the elephant. And the other person is feeling the feet, he goes, no, 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 it's, it's, like, a, it's like a pillar. And the other one is touching the, 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 the trunk, and he goes, no, 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 it's like a rain gutter. And everybody is saying that. And Mawlana says, you know, Darkness is jahiliya. Jahal, ignorance, is darkness. He said, had they had a candle in their lights, each one of them, they would all come to the same conclusion that it's an elephant. And this is what he's seeing here, saying here. That my sir, what's hidden inside of me, is no difference from what I'm crying out. But it's your eyes and your ears that doesn't have the light to see it. You know, these people were not... The modern time, unfortunately, we have dual nature, right? It's, it's all dualism. At the least of it, right? And the Diwana Shams, uh, Mawlana says, Dui as khud birun kardam, yaki didam du alam ra. When I removed dualism from myself, I saw the unity in both worlds. Everything. Then you see the unity. It's the dualism in us that uh, doesn't allow us to see the unity. So he said... You know, like he, here in this world, we have two lives. Generally, some people have three, four, five, up to hundred. Nowadays, most young people, they have the Facebook life, and then they have their regular life. Their Facebook life is so amazing, like you, you just get envious of people. Oh my God, he prays six times a day, reads the Quran every day, he dresses so well, and his wife loves him, he gets gifts. It's like, wow, that's a life. That's a Facebook life. Right? It's amazing. I wish their life were, ha if they were half as good, they would have paradise on earth. But then there's their real life. These guys didn't have that dualism. What they said, how they appear, is how they are. That's it. Inside and outside. They like, uh, they live in, they, their life was a, like a crystal. You can see right through it. But again, he says, if you don't have the eyes, in the ears, the light in your eyes and ears, then you can't see it. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, commentators, he said, Raza'u dar faryada'u nahafta ast, wale har dida liyaqat on ra nadarad, wa har gush rams ra namidanad. That his raza sir is in his words, in his lament. In his cries, it's in there, but not every eye is worthy of seeing it, and not every ear is worthy of hearing it. And and then he says that the the everyone who reached that station of when you become perfected, the, perfect, the perfected human being, right? When you get to that level of, 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 of human perfection, then your sir and your lament can't be separated from each other. You, if, even if you want to, you can't separate it. It becomes one, because it's all unity. There's no multiplicity anymore, once you reach that, that station. <clears throat> Now, within the, the poets, and uh, there's sometimes difference of opinions in some, some issues. So, Rumi just said that you can't see it, right? Because you don't have the light. That's his thing. 
And if you look at the Hafiz, uh, he says, Didan e rui tara, dide e jan bin bayad. Win kuja martabe, chashmi jahan bin e manast. To see your face, or to understand your words here, to see the face of beloved, you need an eye that can see the spirit, that can see right through you. And that's not the station of my eyes, because they're busy looking at the world. In other words, if you're busy looking at the haram, if you're busy looking, how could you see purity? Because you're not in a state of fitrah yourself. You can't see purity. And then Romy continues, Tan ze jano, jan ze tan mastur nist. Li kasra di de jan dastur nist. The soul is not hidden from the body, and the body is not from the soul. It's not covered, it's not veiled. But nobody has the permission to see the soul, right? That's, that's our aqidah. But what Hafiz was saying earlier, he's not talking about He's talking about the inner eye of a believer. The Sahaba, when the Sahaba said, beware of the inner eye of the believer, that he can see right through you, right? That sometimes you said with some people we were mentioning last night, some of the ulama you said, and you feel like they just scanned you. It's like, oh my God, they just saw like how horrible I was. And that's the state that they are in because they always spend their time in the worship of Allah. <clears throat> So the soul is from Alam al-Amr, right? The soul is from the heavenly realm. And the body is from Alam al-Khalq, is from the created realm. This is, a, this is why there's, you can't see them. There's two different realities. So we are, in the human being, we are made from Alam al-Amr and from Alam al-Khalq. So we have both mixed together. And that's the whole argument that if you are pure, you should be able to see right through you should be able to see right through, if you're pure. In the tongue, uh, you know, al-lisan tarjuman al-qalb, the tongue is the translator of the heart. So what these people are saying, what he's saying here, in my tongue what he's saying is translating what's in my heart. And don't think that it's in my heart. I'm a hypocrite that my tongue would say something that is not in my heart. So everything that I'm saying is from the heart and it's pure. آتش از این بانگنای و نیست باد هر که این آتش ندارد نیست باد This bonganai Now Rumi is saying Listen, I told you to listen I cried out I shouted Now I'm screaming he's, I'm just trying to get your attention Now he's screaming That listen, this is a fire What I'm telling you it's like a fire that's going to come and purify you. Just listen to me. This is not wind that's insignificant. This is fire. And whoever doesn't have this fire, if you don't have this fire of love in you, may you be perished. May you be destroyed. Khalas, if you don't have this fire. So listen to me. I'm giving you what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm going to try to ignite a fire inside of you that will purify you. Atashas in Bonganoi. I'm screaming. Because it's a fire I want you to take. It's not wind. And whoever doesn't have this fire, may they be perished. Some of the scholars, they say he's cursing. The one who doesn't have love. The others, they say he's making dua for them. It has dual meaning. That if they, you know, may they have this fire. Uh, you can take it any which way.
ask my teachers and I'll try to uh, get the answers for you inshallah but if there's any questions regarding and if you stick within these what we said today and yesterday that would be the best uh, inshallah now Uh, the question was when you say that the sadness comes uh, at the inception um, I wouldn't call it like sadness it's reality hits this is when you actually reality hits you like you realize okay that was real they brought me from the divine presence from that moment your whole struggle is how do I go back to where I was because you came from a pure place now you're coming here in a world and the world is not it's dunya it's the lower the lowest place right how do I go back to that place and the dunya is the stage all the stages of purification to purify ourselves in reality it's not sadness crying is not you know people think crying is when you're sad we met uh, I don't want to mention his name. One of the shiuch in, in Saudi. We went with some of the scholars and, and I was blessed. And witnesses right here sitting in this room. Two witnesses that were there. I swore by Allah. Every probably minute, two minutes, he would just weep. Weep as though somebody has died. Like uh, first time when he saw, you know, when the shiuch walked in, we were walking in. He just started crying as though I thought I was in an Afghani funeral home. I'm like, oh my God, somebody must have died. And he's just like shouting and crying. And tears, I mean, were just flowing. And then, you know, I said, what is this? We sat down, and then one of the shiuch said something, I think mentioned a hadith about the Prophet and he just burst out into tears again and cried. That's, that's joy. That's being in a state. That's a heart that's living. That's a heart that's living. You know, we met this Mauritanian scholar in Medina with one of our, our beloved shiuch. And we were walking out of the masjid and he said, let's go give salam to him. He, he looks like a, a, a scholar, a wali of Allah. I said, okay, let's go. So we went and give salam. He was paralyzed from one side, like his arm wasn't moving. So he shook hand with us with his left hand. And we talked and, and as we talked and he realized that this person with me, who was with me, he's a scholar, and they talked in Arabic, and they knew the same teachers. It was a very interesting conversation. And at the end, when we were leaving, he picked up his right hand, and he gave it to us. And he said, my body is dead, but my qalb is alive. I swear by Allah, that night I had a hard time sleeping, because he said it with such conviction. He said, وَلَكِنَ al hay," And it just shook me up. And I realized how many of us, like, you know, it's the hearts are dead. Because there's no, you know, people who don't cry, it's, it's, it's a dead heart. So that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about, you know, sadness. The sadness is that I'm sad that I'm here. That's only sadness that is we're here. But the happiness is that I'm going back home. We are happy that we're going back home. But the problem is most people, you know, it's like the Prophet ﷺ said, the dunya is like a bridge. You're there to cross over it. But most of us, we are on the bridge, we are just so amazed at the bridge. And hey, look, it's on the other side. That's where everything is happening. Any other? I hope I answered it. If I didn't, then we'll talk after. Right? Yes. I, I didn't get that, I'm sorry. You know, also I have to mention that um, I had some ears, uh, I'm sorry, in my ears I had water, and, uh, and I probably lost about 30%, 40%, but Dr. Yen helped me, and it's about, I still have about 20% deficiency in hearing, so inshallah within the next few days I'll be okay. But if you speak a little bit louder, if somebody else heard it. Can you comment on the state of the dance that Mawani used to do after the Okay, can you comment on the state of the, the, the whirling of Maulana? I hate the word dance, personally. 
Uh, it's not a dance. But in reality, all of creation is dancing out of joy, right? Saadi says that the whole world is dancing and partying. But what can I say? That a blind man can't see it. Uh, it's, it's wajd. It's different. It's a state that you get in. One of the Persian poets said, Tawaf e kabay dilkun ki kaba am sangis ka on khalil bana kardaw in khuda e khalil. Do the tawaf of your heart as well because Kaaba is a stone as well. That was built by Khalil, the friend of Allah, Ibrahim. This was built by the Lord of the Khalil. One thing that they're doing, you know, he, he just, the, the enjoyment of just thanking Allah, getting from the heavens, bringing it to the heart, right? Encircling and making the tawaf of the heart. Um, I'm not an expert on the Mawlawi tariqah or the, the sama or the dance or whatever you want to call it. That's an experiential state. You know, you can't tell a person how a fig tastes. It's impossible. You have to just give it to them. And this is, here's a fig, just try it. You can't tell them, you know, honey is sweet. Oh, is it sweet like sugar? No. Is it sweet like uh, candy? No. Well, you said it's sweet. It's sweet, but it's not like the, here, try it. You have to give them the honey. These people, these are experiential knowledges. You know, I asked one of my teachers one time, there was a halaqa in, in the Bay Area, and I said, can you teach wahdatul wujud in shuhud? Because we were studying the maktubat of Imam Rabbani. And he said, on the next trip, I said, man, you have another week here. He said, I'm not in the state to teach. I have to be in the state, and next year when I come, I'll do a class on it. Those are, even some of these teachings are, you have to be in a state, those people. So that's, uh, if you go, somebody said, you have to go and see the, the whirling dervishes and experience it. It's a good, I haven't seen it yet. I missed it the last few times they came to the Bay Area. I would like to see it as a, you know, as a performance arts. You know, we go to all these other programs. So it's good to experience it and we can talk about it after. Any other questions? We've got two minutes. Yes. Go ahead. When the, uh, he's talking about heartbreaking, <coughs> uh, when, when, does, uh, when did uh, Rumi's heart broke? Um, you know, breaking of the heart is, you know, uh, Allah is with the broken hearted, right? And if you die in love, in pure love, you die as a shaheed. It's because of the state of the heart. Because on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the only thing that gets scanned is your heart. It's not your hands, it's not your brain, it's not your... It's the heart that gets scanned and everything pops up on the screen. This is what you did. Everything that's in the heart. So that's why إِنَّمَا amal بِالنِّيَاتِ Your actions are rewarded by your intentions that's in the heart. Right? مَحَلِّ النِّيَةِ The Prophet said, وَإِشَارَ إِلَى قَلْبِ Right? And then he pointed to his heart. They said, where is the niyyah? He pointed to his heart. So Ruby's heart broke. The broken heartness, I... If you ask me, is when, when, when Shams left him the first time. He experienced the, the broken hearted. And you can tell because when I read the, the, the poem that I read last night, I mean, I tell you, I read that poem, if I say a hundred times, it's, you know, my friend uh, who's here, he said, You exaggerate the numbers. I said, Well, we are Afghanis, we love exaggeration. So I wouldn't say a thousand, but I, I read it a few hundred times. Uh, it's one of my favorite poems. I do it when I drive. Uh, the whole, all of it. I like this, the read, I probably do it, you know, three, four times a week. Uh, I read the whole 32 lines, you know, just driving in a car. Just, you know, it's just beautiful to read this. It just brings such uh, serenity and peace when you read this in Farsi. Um, it, you know, because I understand the, the language. The English is good uh, unless you understand Farsi. Uh, then uh, that's when the, the, the heart broke. And then it, it keeps breaking, right? That was the first breaking. And then when he leaves, the second breaking uh, of the hearts. As a matter of fact, it might have been when uh, his favorite, his favorite uh, disciple uh, slash uh, spiritual deputy, Khalifa, right? That's the translation we're trying to come up with, with uh, Khalifa. Spiritual deputy 
uh, in disciple. Uh, his name was Freydun Zarkub. And uh, I, you know, my father didn't name me after him. I just found out uh, in January that that was his, his first name was uh, Freydun Salahuddin Zarkub. Uh, he died in that year and the wife of Hussamuddin Chalibi died, which the Masnavi, uh, there was a gap between the first chapter of Masnavi. Once they finished it, there was a, a period of, uh, uh, there was nothing, he couldn't, he didn't do anything. The wife of Hussamuddin died, Faridun Zarkub, the, the goldsmith, died, uh, and then he stopped. So when he started the second chapter, Muddati in Masnavi Takhir Shud, Muhlati Boya Stahun Shir Shud. Uh, he said that, you know, the Masnavi, there was a delay in the Masnavi for a while, but you need time in order for the blood to turn into milk. So that was the, that was the delay in that, that he gave us uh, the milk afterwards, alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we'll uh, stop. If there's any question, if you write it and give it to me, it will be better, and then we can answer it at the beginning of next session, inshallah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا